The Icky Bug Alphabet Book by Jerry Pilata and Ralph Macielo. You know, the principal grandma never stops learning. I did not know how to pronounce the illustrator's last name. I had to look that up. Oh, look, here's the title page. The Icky Bug Alphabet Book, and look, it's special. It's autographed by the author. L is for Lance Weldy, PhD. Jerry Pilata, 2004. It's always neat to get the author's autograph. If you can, you ought to. And don't forget the illustrator. It would be great to get their autograph too. I was gonna to start to read on the first page, but I looked over here on the copyright page and there is paratextual information. I'm gonna read what's underneath the bug. It says, although the general public considers every creature in this book a bug, in fact, only the yellow plant bug and the cotton stainer are true bugs. The velvet mite and the scorpion are arachnids, and the orb weaver, water spider, and tarantula are spiders, a specific kind of arachnid. The rest, including the true bugs, are insects. Isn't that interesting? There's a lot of information that you can find that's not in the actual book itself, but in paratextual information. You could even look on the book jacket. There's information on the back. Always great to find new things in a book, isn't it? Here we go. A is for alphabet book. A is also for ant. Ants are able to carry things that are larger and heavier than they are. They always seem to be trying to build something. B. B is for bumblebee. Because the bumblebee is furry, it is able to stay outside in cooler weather than in other types of bees. Bumblebees fly from flower to flower, collecting nectar to make honey. C. C is for cricket. The cricket likes to hide under things. It makes noises by rubbing its wings together. Isn't it fun to listen to lots of crickets at night? Principal Grandma note, I do not like crickets. You never know where they're going to hop to. D is for dragonfly. The dragonfly has four wings. When dragonflies stop flying and take a rest, they are unable to fold their wings back. E, E is for earwig. No one seems to know how the earwig got its name. It does not crawl into people's ears. It has a pincher at the tail end of its body. F. F is for firefly. Fireflies shine like light bulbs in the dark. When they light up, they can find each other more easily. Fireflies are easy to catch because they fly so slowly. G. G is for grasshopper. Grasshoppers can jump really well. If you try to catch one, it will usually jump away just as you are about to touch it. And principal grandma note, I do not like grasshoppers either. They scare me. I don't know where they're going to jump. I saw millions of them out in Arizona once. I did not like it. H. H is for horsefly. The green-headed horsefly has pretty eyes, but it has a terrible bite. If one of them lands on you, be careful. Yikes! Push it away. I. I is for isle moth. The isle moth has two spots on its lower wings that look like eyes. When birds go near these moths and see the spots, they become startled and fly away. J, J is for Japanese beetle. These beetles love to eat flowers. Sometimes they eat so much that they cause lots of damage to plants. K, K is for Katie did. 
Katydids like crickets make noise by rubbing their wings together. The noise they make sounds like their name. Katie did, Katie did, Katie did. Sometimes they say, Katie didn't. L, L is for ladybug. This insect is really called a ladybird beetle. They are so round, it is hard to believe that they can fly, but they can. M, M is for monarch. The monarch butterfly is known for migrating. It flies from the northern United States all the way to Mexico. Birds know that monarchs taste awful, so they never go near them. N. N is for noceums. Noceums is really a word for tiny insects that are almost impossible to see. They are flies that are really called midges. They can make people miserable because they bite. O. O is for orb weaver. Spiders that make round orb shaped webs are called orb weavers. Many people are frightened by spiders, but most of them will not hurt you. P. P is for praying mantis. It is called a praying mantis because it looks like it's kneeling and praying. Gardeners and farmers like them because they eat pesty bugs that are harmful to vegetables and other plants. Q. Q is for queen bee. In the beehive, there is only one queen bee. She can lay thousands of eggs per day. All of the other bees in the hive take good care of the queen bee. R. R is for red admiral. This butterfly is not bright red like an apple or a cherry. It is rusty orange color. Red admirals are very difficult to catch because they fly fast and erratically. S. S is for scorpion. Scorpions are really scary looking. They have two front pinchers, just like lobsters. At the end of their tails, they have stingers. Would you like to be stung by a scorpion? I wouldn't. T. T is for tarantula. The tarantula is a big furry spider. It can grow to be as large as your hand. Tarantulas and scorpions are found in warm climates. U. U is for unfinished painting. On this page, the illustrator forgot to finish painting the picture. U. U is for unicorn beetle. Okay, that's better. Now the illustrator has finished the painting. The unicorn beetle has a single horn sticking out of its head. V. V is for velvet mite. These creatures are red and so small that you can hardly see them. About 30 of them could fit on the fingernail of your thumb. W. W is for water spider. This spider makes its home underwater. It weaves a special web which allows it to bring air under the water. It catches and eats things that swim or float nearby. X. X is for the marking on the back of this bug. We could not find a bug whose name began with the letter X. This bug is called a cotton stainer. Y. Y is for the yellow plant bug. This bug is very easy to see because it is bright color. It has six legs just like all the other insects. Z. Z is for zillions of zebra butterflies. Zillions of them flying all at once would be a beautiful sight to see. Now that we have gone through the alphabet, on this page are some wicked icky bugs. Oh my, I wonder if you could find out the names of these bugs. The last page has what the author wrote on the copyright page. 
it's that paratextual information about are all of these bugs in this picture really bugs? That was a great book. I enjoyed it. The Icky Bug Alphabet Book. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And remember, the Principal Grandma says, you'll never know what comes next until you turn the page.